I'm gonna give you the key benchmark lifts to throw 35 feet as a high school female in the shot put, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from throwsuniversity.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming a better thrower, you wanna get stronger, you wanna be more explosive, you wanna learn better technique, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a champion. So oftentimes throws-based training can be very mundane, it can be really frustrating, it can be these long arduous hours with no end in sight. And there's just this minimal glimmers of hope on your throwing sessions that you actually take a step back and you sit there and go, am I ever going to get better at throwing? Am I ever going to be able to throw 35 feet? Will I ever throw 40 feet? And a lot of these different things come into everyone's mind when they're training for the throws. And for us specifically here at Throws University, we've been fortunate enough to train nearly a dozen 40 foot female shot putters in high school. We've been fortunate enough to train five different high school girls throw over 48 feet and three different women in high school throw over 50 feet. So what we've been able to do is take that step back, take the last decade of information and data and put together some key benchmark numbers so that we can help others figure out what it takes to throw 35 feet and what exercises you guys need to do in the weight room and how heavy those numbers need to be so that you are able to reach that 35 foot mark. So before we go into those numbers and those exercises, we've got to take that step back and say, what is it that we need to throw the shot far? If I'm a glider, if I'm a spinner, what do I need? I've got to have good mobility. I've got to be strong. I have to be explosive. I have to coordinate rapidly. These are all key facets behind throwing and implement very far in only a seven foot circle. You've got to be able to go in the weight room and cultivate that strength and cultivate that extremely high rate of coordination and that's gonna end up transferring very well over to the circle. So that brings us right into the weight room now. Right off the bat, we're gonna start with the snatch. And if we can think about a snatch as you're taking that bar from the floor overhead in one movement and that's ideally going to be a full snatch. So to get from the floor overhead, making contact off the hips, putting that bar overhead, catching the bar nice and deep down in the hole with good mobility in the hips, good mobility in the ankles, good stability in that thoracic spine. Now we're taking that and you've got to be able to hit 90 pounds to throw 35 feet. Now some of the key factors here is that the snatch is also a technical lift. Throwing is a technical sport. So when we start to attribute the technical aspect of the weight room and carry that over to the circle, now we're starting to have a better approach to training. Now we're having a more cerebral approach to training, a more logical approach to training. And in turn, the snatch is one of the fastest lifts that you can do. So if you can execute that snatch with really good technique, now that 90 pounds is going to be very, very feasible and very easy to achieve. And that's gonna get you on the road to that 35 foot throw in high school. Now that takes us to our second big lift and that's gonna be the clean. And again, a lot of throwers have had a huge increase in their distance when they've brought the Olympic lifts into their training protocols. And a lot of this has to do with the speed that the Olympic lifts can imprint into the body. It improves the way the nervous system recruits high threshold motor units. It improves the trunk stability when we're absorbing the clean. So a lot of different facets go into place in the Olympic lifts and specifically the clean. And that key benchmark number that we wanna hit if we wanna throw 35 feet is 125 pounds. And so we need to make sure, again, focus on your technique early on. Get into the weight room three, four, five days a week. Start to improve your mobility, start to improve your comprehension of technique. And that 125 pounds is going to be very, very feasible in a short time frame. It might be a year of training and now all of a sudden you're hitting that 125 pounds and you're tossing 35 foot bombs. 
Now that takes us to a strength movement in the bench press. We've seen a huge correlation, especially in women, that when their bench press starts to climb, so does their improvement in the circle. They start to get a bigger hit on the shot. They start to have a faster arm. They start to feel more confident. They start to feel better about themselves because they're starting to get a little bit more muscular. And the bench press has a huge, huge correlation to that growth. And that puts us into where we need to be hitting. We need to be benching 135 pounds to hit that 35 foot mark. And that's a huge benchmark. When women first hit that bench with a 45 pound plate on, they hit that for one, that's a great achievement. That's something to be very, very proud of. And that's something that I love to brag about with our female athletes here is that we have women here that can bench press more than dudes on their high school football team because that's how hard they work because of how far they wanna throw. Now, what do we need from a back squat perspective? What do we need from that leg strength perspective? What do we need to execute in the back squat to throw 35 feet? Before we dive into that, we've got to understand that we want this exercise to be a high bar position. We want the bar high on the traps. We want to get our upright torso. We want our knees to go forward, our hips to come back. We want our full foot to be applying force and we want full depth. So we've got to make sure that we're learning good posture, good technique, and that's gonna help us be more stable and execute a better movement throughout the entire lift. A lot of athletes in high school like to squat to a really shallow position. They'll do a quarter squat. Maybe they'll get close to 90 degrees, but everything's going forward and then their knees start to hurt. And then when their knees start to hurt, they start to tell the doctor, I've been squatting and blah, 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 my knees hurt. And now all of a sudden, the doctor tells you squats are bad. Squats are bad if you're doing quarter squats. That's when squats are bad. That's when it's gonna increase the sheer force on your knees and on your lower back. But if you execute a full depth back squat, all you have to do is hit 165 pounds to improve your strength and get you on the road to throwing 35 feet. Now, before we get into that last exercise, if you want more of these benchmark numbers for throwing 40 feet, 45 feet, maybe you're a high school girl and you wanna throw 50 feet. If you want more information and more of these resources, we have this all together in the link down below. You can click on the link. You can head over to throwsuniversity.com and you can pick up this resource specifically to help you with your training goals. If you want more information on that, you can even go over and pick up our ultimate throwers assessment. Now that takes us into our last exercise and that's the front squat. The front squat is going to transfer very, very well to the clean. It's going to also improve the back squat. It's even gonna improve your mobility when you're catching that snatch. So now we're starting to see a nice carryover. This is one of the best ab exercises you can do because you're gonna be squeezing in your gut and your upper back to hold that upright position. And if you can hit 145 pounds in the front squat, now all of a sudden that 125 pound clean is easy. Now all of a sudden all these numbers start to line up. You smash that 35 foot bomb and you feel better and you're starting to work towards getting to that 40 foot mark. So if you want more information about these marks and these lifts that you need to hit, you can click on the link down below. If you want help in designing your strength training program and you need custom based programming, you can head over to throwsuniversity.com and we can build your strength training program to get you on the way to achieving all of these goals. If you want more videos about strength training for throwing, click on this video right here. Until next time, guys, peace.